11. Determine whether the points lie on a straight line. So for part A, we have points 2, 4, 2, 3, 7, negative 2, and 1, 3, 3. So we know if points lie on a straight line if they satisfy if their segments are scalar multiples. And when, w when one segment ends, the other segment begins. So for example, you go A to B, and then you go B to C. And since they start, end and start with B, you know they're gonna be part of a line. And when I say segments are scalar multiple, what that means is that their components are multiple. So for example, 2, 4, 3 is a scalar multiple of 4, 8, 6, but not a scalar multiple of 4, 3, 6. So you can kind of see that this is like times 2. 2 becomes 4, 4 becomes 8, 3 becomes 6 times 2. And you can't really have, there's not one scalar multiple which satisfies all these, because for the x components times 2, but then for, for the 4 going to the 3, that's like a uh, 3 fourths times three fourths times two and since all, all since it's not it doesn't have a common scalar multiple they would not be uh pet would be would not lie on a straight line all right so let's find a b and b c So this equals 3 minus 2, 7 minus 4, negative 2 minus 2, which equals the segment 1, 3, negative 4. And it's, not, it's kind of not really a segment. You would call it more of a vector. But since we haven't uh, gotten to that part yet in the book, we're just going to call it a segment. And for BC, we have 1 minus 3, 3 minus 7, 3 minus minus 2, which is a plus 2. And that is negative 2, negative 4, 5. So it's already clear already that there's no scalar multiple. Because to get to 1 and negative 2, you got to multiply by negative 2. Then to get to 3 to negative 4, you got to multiply by negative 4 thirds. And these aren't common, so you can say these points don't lie on a straight line. And I can show this further by showing the graph of these points. And it'll become very clear that these points do not lie on a straight line. So let's go to the part B. So this is A. So now we go into B, let's do a different color. So we have D, E, and E, F. This equals 1. 1 minus 0, negative 2 minus minus 5, which is plus 5, 4 minus 5, which is that. So this equals 1, 3, negative 1. Now if you go to EF, we have 3 minus 1, 4 minus minus 2, which is plus 2, and then 2 minus 4, which is that. And then we have 2, 6, negative 2. And notice if you multiply DE by 2, you get this. 1 becomes a 2, 3 becomes a 6, negative 1 becomes a negative 2. So since they're scalar multiples, you could call these uh, segments for now, but these are more, more of a, ve a vector than a segment. But since those are scalar multiples, and if this ends, and then it starts, continuously you can say it's on a straight line and 
to drive this point home, I'll show you the points on the graph. So let's just hide these. Sometimes this is a little buggy. We have D, E, and F. And creates this segment. And you can see that these points are all in a straight line. And also, if you make the connection that we multiply DE by 2 to get EF, and you can see that DE times 2 equals EF. And same with the magnitude, because look, over here we have the magnitude of DE, which is 3.32, and the magnitude of FE or EF, which is 6.63. So just multiply by 2 and you get that. So that's a cool connection.